everybody. Happy to see you guys again. I hope everyone is doing well. And today I am going to be talking with Dave. Uh, he would like to share some of his experiences. He traveled to Ukraine recently in November. So I made a video recently also about um, <laughs> can an American or can a foreigner survive in Ukraine by his, on his own? And David obviously survived. So 100% <laughs> rate. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so how are you today? Yes. How are you doing? Tell I'm us. I'm doing just wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, and I thought it would be helpful for maybe other people get inspired, get in their, mm -hmm. uh, like you said, you know, get <laughs> uh, <laughs> there, get going. <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah, what would you, what do you think, um, like, what was your overall experience, you know, is there something you would like to share for those people who had not traveled yet and considering, you know, maybe go on their own, but a little scared? I, I think it's just a, a great idea to go on your own. I think that it's a warm, friendly country. I say warm, it's warm, the people are warm. I went in November and it was very cold and there was a lot of snow. But to be honest with you, it was a great experience. I can't say enough about the people there and about um, how safe it is relatively um, as long as you have a plan when you go there and you don't just show up and, and look. It's just like any place. You don't want to look like a tourist, right? You want to blend in. You want to have a plan. You want to walk with determination like you know where you're going you don't want to, to walk around with a map in your hands you know you, you just want to be it, it, it's the same advice I would give if you were going to another country it's the mm -hmm. same it's exact same advice mm -hmm. yeah well you had made uh, a few connections before you went there so you knew some people you had an interpreter you knew a lady who were who, who were helping you over there Yes, yes, and I, and I think anybody watching this obviously is familiar with you, and so what you need to do is leverage the people you know. Like obviously, people can talk to you about contacts in in Kiev or Ukraine. They can talk to me. They can talk to other men, mm -hmm. and make sure you have some contacts that will look out for you. Okay, mm -hmm. and I don't. It's a difference between looking out for you and holding your hand. Okay, looking out for you just means. Maybe they meet you at the airport. Maybe they help you get a taxi at a good price. Maybe they help you with a hotel or, or something or some advice on getting to a bus station, which bus to take or something like that. It, it's just help, but it's not holding your hand. You still feel like you can do this on your own, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah, yeah, have context. Definitely. Yeah, and um, I think it's, it's, it's really lovely, you know, when you come to, to another country and, you, you know, you have... Uh, somebody maybe meeting you at the airport and having taxi or having a, you know interpreter maybe not for the full time but you know a couple hours showing you around going out with you yes um, so absolutely I could help with some of that you know you also can find you know you, you can make your own connections you can start talking to people you know a couple months ahead you know some of you of course you know many of you guys uh, want to travel and you know hopefully meet a soulmate but don't be closed up because you when you talk and make friends even I don't know through social media or friends of your friends uh, mm -hmm. you can create friendship yes definitely there's so many avenues to meet people mm -hmm. and contacts and and people are just Anybody that's experienced Ukraine or traveling over there, they're always willing to, to give you advice, pay back, pay forward, I should say. They, mm -hmm. Everyone is willing to help you. Mm -hmm. Maybe you give you a referral. Hey, talk to this person or that person. Or I know somebody in Kiev you can talk to or something like that. You know, just everyone I found was generous with their information and mm -hmm. helping you. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have uh, any maybe, you know, experiences that... I, you would like to share something that surprised you or, you know, during your trip? <laughs> I, 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 well, there's a few things that surprised me. One was taking a bus and, under, and understanding that the tickets are negotiable. So it's kind of like, you know, there's a, there's a stated price. And then if you 
you pay the bus driver, you know, you could pay him. I think he puts it in his pocket or something. I don't know what it is, but you can either buy tickets at the ticket counter or you can just pay the bus driver. That's what I'm mm -hmm. trying to say. Mm -hmm. So I, I learned little tricks like that. Sometimes you get a better deal by paying the bus driver. Mm -hmm. Because, um, and then the other thing is, is that um, transportation is so cheap there. Um, I'm not a big taxi guy, you know, I feel like taxis in a lot of cities in the U.S. are very expensive. But over there, I could go for a dollar, dollar fifty to uh, a mile or a mile and a half, two miles in snow, snowy weather, you know. Uh -huh. And it was just very cheap. You don't want to be walking if you don't have to, if you're, yeah. you're dressed up and you're out to go on a date or something. Uh -huh. You want to be, and, and the other thing is you, you, you want to be considerate of the other person. Just because you're having the date, you want to make sure that they get home safely. And it's just, you want to, you want to be gentlemen all the time. Yeah. Uh, so you have to, yeah, you have to kind of figure out, you, you know, get ready a little bit earlier, uh, meaning learn the city, knowing, you know, what transportation, you can use subway because, in, you know, with the subway they have announcements, you know, the stations, they have English also map, you can, inside of the subway, you can see, you know, your stations. Um, I would not really recommend for you guys to use our Maxi Taxi Marshrutka. It's like small, crazy bus. <laughs> I would not really, you know, really with inflation, like David just said, you know, you can go, uh, you can use, um, you know, you, you can catch a taxi for a couple dollars. It's it's not expensive. You, you have to ask earlier how much, you know, you're going to pay, but... Um, you know, you you can have a taxi ride without any problems. And my little tip here, try to have, uh, you know, small money with you, like small. Mm -hmm. um, you see, in America, if I give a big bill, I always get changed, no problem, if I agree on a deal. Mm -hmm. But in Ukraine, if you, let's say you negotiate a little bit the taxi deal, mm -hmm. make sure you have that exact amount. Because if you said it's 10 and you give them 20, they're like, you have 20, man. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, now I want to ask you, like, uh -huh. what did you love about Ukraine? What did you enjoy the most? What can you tell about, you know, uh, what is your point on, uh, you know, Ukrainian ladies? And did you, I mean, mm -hmm. what are your insights? And we talked uh, with you before and, you you know, you have very deep uh, understanding and very good insights on our culture and um, relationships, things. So... I just would like if you you know if you could share a little bit like what did you enjoy the most? Well, well, being that I went in winter, I didn't get to see a lot of the beauty that you see in summer and spring with the mm -hmm. flowers and all that. So it was a little different, but that didn't stop me from understanding the people and the kindness and the beauty of the people there. And um, what I really enjoyed was the meetings where everybody is so just polite and they're just so uh, caring and considering they're asking you how you're doing and all this and everything is about you and they're very generous and um, I, th I think that I just enjoyed um, seeing also the just the normal people like you know, like even on a bus ride or something I like interacting with the people on the bus and seeing mm -hmm. Uh, they stop in little towns and there someone comes on there and says uh, they've got uh, what's it called, uh, Haluski or something. Some woman will come on the bus and she'll try to be selling mm -hmm. some food to everybody on the bus. And, you know, because they know that when they stop the bus, if you get off that bus and the bus keeps going, you're stuck there, right? Mm -hmm. so, so vendors will come onto the bus and try to sell, oh, wow. sell food to you. I'm missing out. <laughs> Cute little things that happen in these small towns. And, and you know, it, it's just very interesting... Um, to see that everybody is walking so determined to get to where they're going. You know, everybody is just, they walk with a purpose there, you know. Mm -hmm. You don't see people wandering aimlessly. <laughs> like like you see in America, you just see people wandering around, you know. Yeah. Everyone is walking with a purpose. Everyone's busy. They're always busy, is what I found out. Always doing something. Always going to the next thing, mm -hmm. you know. Well, i tell you why. Because uh, these people that are... 
walking with a name, they they go into they doing some work. They just don't owe a car, so they need to go and catch another bus or subway. So they don't just taking a walk. They go in to work or they are in between uh, the the working errands. And if you go to the park, you you will see people aimlessly walk, walking around. Now, one thing I want to observe, and it just popped in my mind now, is that unlike our country here. I see people with smartphones, but they're not with their head down, walking, texting like you see here all the time. You see people constantly texting and looking on their smartphone. They're walking, and the phone is in their pocket. If they get a call, they'll answer it, but they're not constantly typing into their phone. So it's kind of like they use the phone as they need it. They're not at the point like we are here where they're just um, bound to their phone. You know what I'm saying? They just yeah. constantly. I I went to a mall and I would see some people texting and all that, but most people they just keep the phone until they need it. They're not they're not a slave to their phone. Does that make sense? Yeah, that so- sounds good to me. Yeah, let's hope it stays that way. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Yeah, it's it sounds you know like it's kind of more freedom. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have, have you tried the Kiev subway? No, I didn't, and the only reason I didn't was because I had a suitcase, and I didn't want to look like a tourist. So I, I spent the extra money and took the taxi from the airport mm-hmm. or from uh, the the bus station back to my hotel. Mm-hmm. And I could have jumped on the metro, but then I kind of look. You know, if you're standing there with a suitcase, you look like you're a tourist. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you have yeah. you have a possibility to take a taxi, it's good. And another thing, I want to warn you guys. Uh, if you are in the daytime, in the middle of the day, you know you can really enjoy the subway. It's very clean. The stations are very beautiful in mm-hmm. Kiev. It's very cheap. But if you go morning or evening, I would not recommend you going because we have so many people from other cities, and you know they are working in Ukraine, so it's a rush hour, like seven, eight mm-hmm. in the morning, and then you know five, six, seven in, at night. I've been there a few years back, and it was packed. Like you are like a, you know, like a little fish. Yes, yeah. Squeezed in a box. So I'll tell you what else is packed is the actual stations. There are people, women particularly, and men sell, selling uh, fruits and vegetables and various things right in the subway station. Yeah. And boy, I, I got yelled at because I was blocking. I was actually with my suitcase and I was standing there, and I was calling somebody on the phone, and she started yelling at me because I was blocking the view of her yeah. produce. Like, you know, move, move, go down, go, they, go somewhere they else. They still have it. Yeah. So, it's, you know, it's actually against the law to have stuff in subway like that because if there is an emergency and people need to run, this the those lobbies, you know, those long holes, I mean, uh, should be empty. We, we had it back and forth when I was there, and they still selling their stuff. They're far from empty, and and you can still get uh, many many fruits for very little grivna, very little. Oh my gosh! Don't tell me! Don't even tell me about this food. <laughs> you know, it's it's so it's it's so crazy. I I just I just love our food. I'm, I just love it not because you know I'm I'm I'm. Um... <sighs> no, no, one thing about food is the the towns you go to will have restaurants. But I found out that there's places outside the outside of the towns that are the best. Yeah. You know the places that where they do receptions, they do parties, wedding receptions, things like that. They sometimes are open if you just go there for dinner, mm-hmm. and they're usually like wooden lo- wooden lodges, or yeah, kind of was, fancy yeah. places with big courtyards, and everything there is just home cooked food. It's yeah. like real Ukrainian food, mm-hmm. oh. and you may have to go five ten miles outside the city, but yeah. it's worth the trip. It does, and actually in the city, I want to recommend you guys in the city, I mean, uh, you know, you, we actually have a ch- some chains of homemade food. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know what? I can search online. Maybe I can put some links. I'm sure, you know, I have not heard about them closing. Closing one of them called Puzata Hata. It's like pot belly. Huh. It's it's like incredible homemade. Ukrainian food. They basically go to villages. They buy this real beautiful, you know, food. And then, you know, people who work there, they also from those villages. So they keep their overhead very low. 
Yes. And they create this authentic Ukrainian food for, you know, I think it's cheaper than uh, McDonald's. And it's like, <laughs> it's real. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Like, I can't wait to go there and bring my son because he loves, uh, you know, Russian and Ukrainian food. I don't cook it too often, you know, but I, I do make our soups and stuff and he loves it. So I can't wait to take him there and he'll be like, it's just, you know, it's, you have to try it. I can, you know, you can't explain food somebody. You guys have to get your... Um... <laughs> it, now, if you go at a slow time, I swear that this was the case. The woman that greeted us at the door went back in the kitchen, cooked the food, and then she brought it out to you. So it's like she's doing everything. Mm -hmm. You know, in other words, um, you're getting the cook herself bringing you the food. Mm -hmm. And and there's nothing more special than that, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's like you're in her house. It's almost like you're in her house. Yeah. She's serving you like she would serve you if you were in her, her home, mm -hmm. right? I mean, so, yeah. it's so, very special. Right. So, guys, the bottom line and the message of, of, you know, our video is really to tell you, you know, that there is nothing so... Um, you know, impossible, it's, you know, it's not so uh, completely, you know, it's not even scary, it's not even uh, yeah. something, it's just another trip, um, and David did some, you know, uh, groundwork, you know, he, he, you know, met some people online, he made some connections, he had some people, somebody who was meeting him, but um, basically you did travel on your own. Yeah, it was just me, and, um, and you, you know, and it was winter and everything, but I, I just... Uh, it was a bold move. I was, yeah, but you know what? It Like like I said, I never felt threatened. I always felt fairly safe. Mm -hmm. People are generally um, kind, and even with the economy as bad as it is there, they don't look to, to steal necessarily. They, they're there. If you ask for help, they will help you. I had, I had people at the bus station just help me. I asked... Mm -hmm. uh, they understood some English and they, they helped me and they had nothing to gain by helping me, but they're just, just good Samaritans, kind people, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they don't change because of the economy. It's not like they become uh, a different person because things are rough, you know. They stick to their principles, right? And, yeah. You know. I think overall, yes, I mean, of course, uh, there is no guarantee, you know, that you won't run into somebody who is rude or... You know, there is no guarantee. If you have a lot of people in in Kiev, you know, there are many, you know, millions <laughs> like of people in there. But yes, you just have to, you do have to do some, have to do some groundwork to be prepared, to be alert, uh, because you know, I believe that you know, majority of people is good. But you just have to, you know, have your documents together, have you know, photocopy of your mm -hmm. all your passports. You know, when you have your money and you vote, always keep it zipped close to your chest or somewhere where you can actually feel it because you know just because it's a big city people come there and we do have um you know those low class people who kind of do all the things but it's anywhere in the europe anywhere you, know, you go it's the same yeah all the yes. advice you just gave is the same advice if i went to spain i would do yes. the same thing it, it, it's not Ukrainian advice. It's just common sense. Right. But you know, D David, if if somebody is an American and had never traveled, sure. uh, you know, here, I, I, you know, I'm in Michigan and uh, I go out in the winter, you know, for do some shopping. And I see we have some people who live their car running uh, while <laughs> in the store because it's so cold, you know. So in Ukraine, you don't want to do that. If, mm. When you come back, there'll be no car. Or people, you know, like guys walk around, you know, his wallet is here. His, mm. you know, his thing is, oh, you know, never put your wallet in your back pocket or any somewhere hanging in your pockets over here, like slappy. Have it tight, zipped next to your chest that you can feel it. Just mm. my heartfelt advice. Because there are people that have actually business, you know, of in all big cities in Europe and in the world, there are people like that. Just common sense, but if you never traveled and you do not have somebody around you, you have to just be, you know, prepared and just alert. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, like, here people go to the stores, they sometimes leave their purse in the cars, they don't lock the cars, they don't lock the doors. <laughs> At least here in Michigan, like where I live, uh, people in my neighborhood, people often don't lock anything. Just because it's very, you know... 
kind of <laughs> cooks yeah. and everybody knows everybody. So kind of like a, you know, mentality too relaxed. You don't want to be like that in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, so basically you, if you cannot, uh, um, if you are not a person that you are kind of more of individual person, you don't really want to travel, you know, with a group or, you know, buying a tourist package or something mm -hmm. like that, you can still travel to Ukraine and be safe. Yeah, the, the next step for me would be to actually learn the culture more, like go there and, and go to somebody's house and have a meal with them or maybe mm -hmm. go for some drinks or something and just be, you, you know, I, I was still kind of a consumer going from hotel to restaurant. Mm -hmm. But what really, the really good, the next experience would be to actually go there have the friends you've established, you know, they invite you to their home for dinner, or maybe they bring out some vodka and you have some drinks, and you mm -hmm. you just experience the whole the whole life, you know. The that's whole the most culture. fun. That that's the next steps, you know. But first, you got to go there, and you've got to establish comfortable, mm -hmm. yeah, comfort with the region and with the mm -hmm. the area first, yeah. Yeah, that is a very good uh, idea because. You can yeah. really feel the culture if you mm -hmm. stay with you know local people, go to the home. Um, I have a last question for today yeah. is about money. Do you use? Did you use your you know your your visa cards? Did you bring some cash with you? How did that work for you? Yeah. So what I did first of all was I made sure that I knew, like if I had Bank of America, there's a certain bank. Um, in the towns I was going to that's affiliated with them and they wouldn't charge fees mm -hmm. to get cash and their ATMs would work for me and things like that. And so I, I already did my homework there. I let my bank know I was traveling so they wouldn't mm -hmm. stop my card. That's very important. Let your bank know that you travel. Yeah, now I would bring a certain amount of cash and then at the airport, I would as soon as I land, I go right to the Cambio or the, the exchange mm -hmm. And I would get enough for the ca the taxi ride right. for the next day or so. I would make sure I get enough. Right. And then the malls all have those places. Too. Yeah, you know, unlike in the U.S., I actually have some euros. You know, yeah. because I traveled, I can't change them anywhere. I I mean, in East Lansing, where you know here, you know, like uh, you know, Michigan State University or any you know Ann Arbor, you know, you you would think there are so many international places here in a way. But yeah. I cannot change. I have some, like, I think I have like 200 euros or something. And I want, I think maybe I should change them. But I'm saving them when I travel. Right. But in Ukraine, an exchange, a currency exchanges at every corner. So if for some reason you missed out opportunity in uh, airport, actually in airport, they don't have the best currency exchange just between me and you guys. So <laughs> you can, <laughs> at every corner, you can, Currency exchange is not a problem at all. Yeah, the only thing I would say is also try to get the small denominations. Yeah. As much as you, a lot of times they won't give it to you in small. They they can't afford to lose all their small bills, so they they'll give you high bills. And then, like you said, you'll be stuck in a situation where you have to ask for change, and you want to make sure that you have that change mm -hmm. ahead of time. Be prepared. Right, but yeah. you know what you can do is when they give you higher, uh, you know, like higher bills you can go to the grocery store and make shopping at the grocery store they always give you the change they yeah. they won't give you the change if you and you negotiate yeah. you're at the market or you are with a taxi driver but in the official store they you will buy something and they will break your money so you can have some smaller uh you know amounts so yeah. you can go right. around and, and, and my, my policy was to use my uh, credit card at the hotel and at the, uh, the, the nice restaurants, you know, that were, you know, the, I had trusted the restaurants that took mm -hmm. the card. And then I would um, use cash everywhere else, mm -hmm. especially taxis, you have to use cash, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... But yeah, no problems at all. And, and then the other thing is, if you know you're coming back, always make sure that you keep some of the currency. Although some people would say... No, you you know, with the dollar changing, you want to get back into dollars. But if you can afford, it's always next next time I arrive, it's nice to have some a little bit uh, left. Ribna yeah. already in my pocket, and mm -hmm. it's a kind of a nice thing to do. Yeah, not big amounts, but just a little bit. 
Oh, yeah. At least enough to get by the first day. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. So, guys, thank you uh, for watching. We will, we will think about some more insights and tips. I think it's important for you to hear them from somebody who travel, you know, who is um, foreign, you know, who has to figure things out. And uh, we're going to talk also about some mentality issues. And uh, I, David has really excellent insights and advice for men how to understand better Ukrainian women, you know, like... Ukrainian women mentality is a lot different than American, so we will uh, think we will consider you know talking about that next time. So thank you so much. Feel free to yeah. Ask, and, and when you go there, be generous. Be generous and and tip tip the people there. It's not a, it's not a strong economy. Don't try to to bargain and negotiate the lowest prices on something that's trivial to you. Mm -hmm. You know, Isaac, be sure you're generous. Right, like you made an example, you know, if you see a lady, you know, that sell roses for six dollars, you know, don't try to make it five, give her seven. Yeah. You know, somebody who you see that you feel that they're genuine, that they work very hard, that they stand in a cold weather, uh, yeah. you know, enjoy doing that if you can. Uh, you know, it's a big difference uh, between some uh, big luxury, exquisite things and just you know, being grateful to people who are hard workers and yeah. just, that's actually David's approach. Um, and it just, you know, you actually make a difference by doing that. Yeah, yeah. You make and, a difference. And, and you really, the people light up because, you know, that that's, you know, their view of the American, uh, you know, you want it to be positive. You're helping the next, the next guy will benefit. Yes. If you're generous, because we should be. You're already getting a good deal with the exchange rate, so why do you want to make it even better by mm -hmm. taking their money? You know, it doesn't make sense. You know? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, guys, with that being said, we, <laughs> we have a hard, <laughs> hard time stopping. But with that being said, we will see you next time. Thank you for watching. Uh, I'm going to post the link to the my Facebook page. If you have some questions, you're free to uh, you know to ask and we'll do our best to answer. Thank you.